然后这场议程呢，分享他在过去，他们在过去十二到十二、十二到十八个月中，持续进持续进行了合作和努力。然后，诶，因为在过去这十二到十八个月里面，就是呃 ，COVID n i 的大流行嘛，所以他们演讲会去分析，在过去这一年中，在 Ghost 的 DNS 上面有哪些心态攻击以及威胁。然后最后呢，他们就有与其他呃其他国家的 C 社跟 P 社合作，然后。一起分享这些情资，然后让我们就开始聆听这两位讲者为我们带来的分享。谢谢大家。诶，另外就是本次呃本次议程有支援线上的 l i f e Q&A， 然后如果想询问的话，可以透过网页的议程表的 slide 连接对讲者进行询问，然后也可以透过现场提问的方式向讲者向讲者询问问题。就这样，那我们就开始吧。Good morning, everybody, and, and welcome to our talk entitled "Collaborate from Home: The Japanese and UK Edition."、Um, so, to begin with, I, I'm going to give you a, a bit of a background about us as speakers,、um, our, our history together, and then what our talk is going to focus on、uh, and, and contain. So, to begin with, I'm Joshua Hopkins, a threat researcher with Team Cymru. Um, and I'm the the UK element of the the Japan and UK edition. And with me today is is Manabu, who I'll let him introduce himself. I'm Manabu Miseki, and、uh, yeah, I'm Japanese, and I'm an ex speaker of Hitokon. So maybe this is not the first time to meet you. It's a great honor to give a talk at Hitokon again. And、uh, it's really sad that I cannot reach Taiwan this time. I wish I could meet you shortly soon, and also I wish our presentation will be something useful to you. <laughs> Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you, Th thank you, Manabu,、um, and and I, I guess I echo some of those、um, those sentiments as well.、Um, it, it's a shame that we can't be in, there in person、um, to, to to meet everybody,、um, and I, I think that's what. Is is behind our talk in some ways is is this idea of how we can continue to collaborate in a in a new normal.、Um, so when we were first submitting this talk、uh, as a call for paper, we were kind of in in a state of flux where everybody was working from home. We you know we couldn't collaborate with each other, but we also almost couldn't co collaborate with our colleagues in the same way.、Uh, we couldn't meet in person.、Um, so. As as the year has gone by, this talk has evolved in some ways、um, to look at how we can、uh, speak about our, our our own experiences of collaboration to hopefully encourage others to do the same.、Uh, based on what a new normal might look like, if we you know if we're moving towards remote working, how can we continue to have these kind of、uh, conversations and and joint working efforts?、Uh, And, and and what are the the mechanisms and the the ways we can ensure that 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 takes place?、Um, so we come up with the the strapline of work from home, collaborate from home. So the, the talk today will contain examples of the the collaboration that myself and Manabu have have undertaken together, and then we'll talk about. How we've then shared those collaborations with others, some successes, some failures, some advice for others, I guess,、um, and and so yes,、yeah, so, so, some tips on on sharing who to, to who to share with in order to make the the largest impact possible.、Uh, I guess we're all in this industry for the for similar kind of reasons to improve internet safety, to mitigate losses or harm to victims,、um, and so it's important that we we kind of all work together to achieve. Achieve this objective.、Um, so we're going to use a couple of examples, as as I mentioned,、um, and the first one is Ghost DNS. And I'll, I'll give a, a brief introduction into what Ghost DNS is first, if if it's not something that people are are aware of or have have come across before.、Um, it's not really a threat that that targets directly the the Asian region, but as as we'll discuss, it's something that in theory could do in the future. Or, or has done under different guises.、Um, so, Ghost DNS is a, a DNS hijacking campaign or toolkit 
uh, which is sold on the dark web for a, about 450 US dollars. Um, and it incorporates uh, a number of different open source elements. So it, it, it's basically a, a toolkit that's you know, put together based on tools that are available to, for anybody to use effectively. Um, so in the example here, it's using MassScan for its, its scanning, scanning element. Um, and, and based on various different numbers um, that, that we've seen being mentioned, there's been upwards of uh, 100,000 SOHO routers uh, that were compromised using this uh, infrastructure. Um, so it, it mainly targets residential internet users, um, you know, based on issues around credentials, outdated firmware, they're, they're the easiest targets for this. Um, and there's, there's a real focus on South American users. Um, we, we believe that the, at least the developers and the creators of Ghost DNS are, are, are likely Brazilian based and, and also some of the, the users of Toolkit as well. Um, and, and the main focus is in credential harvesting, so taking uh, credits from banking, e-commerce, um, a number of different other services like we mentioned here with Netflix, um, and then selling those credentials at scale on the dark web. So, you know, taking bank account information and selling it for a couple of dollars and then repeating that um, across you know, the hundreds of thousands of victims that potentially lost credentials in this way. Um, so in terms of why this is relevant um, for a threat that's you know, targeting Brazil, um, we think it, it, it's still relevant because it's, you know, it's been around for a number of years now. Uh, it's not particularly sophisticated. As we mentioned, it's, it's based on open source tooling, open source scripts. It's, it's something that you, know, you, you don't need much um, technical know-how to, to use and to operate, but yet it's still been hugely, hugely successful um, with hundreds of thousands of, of victims, as we mentioned. Um, and, and the way that we work is changing. This goes back to the point of remote working. Um, and so we feel like Soho routers are going to become increasingly attractive targets. Um, and, and then the final point is um, using this as an example to consider whether we're prepared for more sophisticated actors using this technique or using Soho routers in some form. Um, and we point to the, the recent example um, based on reports from France that APT31 have been using compromised routers to target organizations in France. It shows that this is something that you know isn't restricted to uh, cyber criminals, it can be used by nation states as well. And then also interestingly, um, as we've been tracking uh, Ghost DNS over the past year or so, we've seen a real spike in activity um, beginning uh, last October up until around July of this year. And so we felt like comparing, you know, like for like, month on month, this showed a real uh, clear um, peak in activity that we felt might be related to the actors who were operating Ghost DNS or operating uh, similar exploits um, to basically be making the most of the pandemic knowing that a lot of people were at home using home, home computers for, for various different things uh, and, and, and effectively trying to um, take advantage of that as, as much as possible. Um, so now we're going to talk about how we've then, uh, you know, once we've completed our work together, how we've then shared that or tried to share that with other people. So Manabu first is going to talk about um, some of the, I guess, the failures or the, 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 the less successful um, outcomes that we've had. Okay, let, let me share failures I made relating to ghost DNS. I shared collected IOCs with SATBR, the National CSAT of Brazil, through my friend who works at the National CSAT in Japan. But nothing happened. There is no reply, no reaction from SATBR. Yeah. Please go ahead. In retrospect, I think my attitude towards information sharing is not good. I just shared a list of IOCs. I should share a context of information because, you know, context matters. Also, yeah, information makes sense with a context. Just a 
list of IO sheets does not make any sense. Also, I have to set a shared goal of collaboration with an opponent before starting. Setting a shared goal is a key to success. Okay, and, and then now I'm going to talk about um, some of the, the successes, I guess, that we had um, in follow-up to that. So taking uh, Manabu's experiences in, in interfacing with CERT BR, um, we, we established some further contacts with them. Um, as, as Manabu mentions, um, talking about context, talking about effectively their objectives in, in tracking ghost DNS. It's a, a very interesting subject for them, as you can imagine, with the, the number of victims. Um, and, and, you know, we were able to do that in part because we have existing relationships. Um, we've, we have um, contacts in, in Brazil who were able to, to, to effectively link us up with, with people in CERPR. And I think this really underlines the importance of relationship building in in this space um so c certs and certs are always organizations that y you want to be sharing information with or um liaising with as, as much as possible if if you come across something that you feel like it might be of interest to um a country at a national level i think those organizations are the best place to start but as as manipu mentions it's about establishing the context and what that looks like. Um, I, I mentioned here priorities and patience. Um, you know, a cert is dealing with any number of different threats at it, it, it one particular time, and it might be that your piece of information is interesting, but it might not rank at the top of their list uh, for priority at that time. So it's it's about being patient and you know if following up if you don't get a response, but 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 being patient and waiting for the answer and, and then working towards not just sharing your information because you think it's interesting, but also working with the other party to, to establish what would be of, of use to them. It might be that they've already had that information shared in the past. Um, and I think another important area is in, in social media um, and and the maybe the, the way that we use it within uh, the cybersecurity community. Um, you know, a, a lot of people are using social media as a uh, mechanism for ingesting IOCs. Uh, you know, the, we've turned something that is a, a human platform into an automated, um, uh, you know, automated data collection environment, effectively. And maybe we're not using it in the way that we should. Maybe we should be. You know, reaching out more, speaking to different people. If we see somebody reporting on something that is also of interest to us, um, can we be reaching out more, sharing the conversation, sharing our, our findings? Um, and I think that's a, a really interesting area that we, I guess, we need to. We're almost forced to get into because of the the changing lands, landscape with the with the pandemic. Um, and then the second example is uh, Mokhao or Xloader, um, which uh, Manabu is going to introduce. Okay, Mokhao is an um, Android malware. It is spread via SMS and uh, log DNS servers. A campaign spreading Mokhao is known as Xiaoye in Taiwan. Please go ahead. At the moment, SMS is the main attack vector of Mokhao. There is a URL of a landing page in um, SMS. And, uh, a victim is navigated to download Mokhao if a victim uses an Android smartphone. Otherwise, if a victim uses iPhone, a victim is navigate, navigated to a phishing website, which impersonates Apple. Yep, please go ahead. This is an overview of Mokhao distribution on one day in September. France, Japan, Germany, South Korea, the United States, Turkey, and uh, Taiwan are targeted. Please go ahead. Again, Taiwan is one of the targets of Mokhao. 
Macau uses a uh, transport service in Taiwan as a rule. Uh, excuse me, I, I'm not sure how to pronounce it in your language. I mean, traditional Chinese, but I can read Takubin in the in Japanese, and uh, I know it's a uh, it means a uh, transport service. And uh, yeah, yep, please go ahead. And then uh, an another element of our uh, um, research or tracking of of Mokhao has been looking at the network telemetry uh, that Team Cymru is able to provide. Um, and, and looking in particular at second stage C2 servers. So at this stage, we, we know that um, a, a potential victim has already downloaded the, the malicious APK. And so this is the follow-up connection um, generated by, by the malicious file. Um, and as you can see here, we, we've redacted the, the victim IP addresses, but we have, have seen consistent uh, victims connecting from Taiwan. Um, and, and we've we've replicated this across different countries as well. Um, so one one of the things that we we try to do with our collaboration on Mokhao is to show um, show to different countries that it's it's you know it's not a threat that only targets Asia. As uh, Manabu mentions, we, we've seen victims in France, and Germany, and Turkey, around Europe, the United States. And I think the more you raise the profile of a threat, the more that people can come together and, and work on it. Um, so I pass back yeah. over to Manabu. Okay, yeah. Why is this relevant? You know, the new normal, new normal is working from home and also ordering from home. So I think postal or transport service becomes a favorite rule or threat doctor. The transport services Excuse me. Transport services in South Korea, Taiwan, and uh, Japan are used as uh, rules by Moka. Yeah, please go ahead. And again, again, let me explain my collaboration failures, failure relating to Moka. I got a DM from a guy who claims he is a researcher and uh, he looked legitimate and uh, looked like a uh, looks like having a good reputation online. He requested to share Mokau information I collected. Then I was so naive and I shared information with him without any doubt. But uh, he did not share anything with me and also he published an article about Mokau without credit. So uh, please go ahead. Yeah, excuse me. Yeah, and uh, yeah, again, he didn't share anything with me, and uh, also he published an article about Mokau under his name without any credit of me, so I was just robbed. Yeah, please go ahead. Lessons I learned is be aware of trolls. Trolls are everywhere, and uh, you should share information only with trustable persons or groups, otherwise you will be robbed. <laughs> Please go ahead. And uh, an issue to be solved is creating a good relationship during the pandemic because, you know, getting to know each other well is difficult nowadays because, you know, the, there are many restrictions. For example, I really, I really miss a peer bash after a conference in my opinion, there should be a peer bash after a conference because it's a very good opportunity to make friends. Yeah. I'm not sure because I haven't tried it, but all boys gather or something like that may work, uh, but I'm not sure. Yeah. L let me know if you have a good solution for all that. Yeah. Please go ahead. Um, so to talk about I guess again, some of our successes with collaboration is is we look to work with a reputable body. So we worked with JP Sir um, to to share some of our findings, uh, and a lot of this was was based around victim analysis and and trend analysis. So so one of the the, the questions that was asked was about. Um, impact over time and so we looked at a particular period um, in the in the Japanese calendar where 
Um, there's, there's public holidays, the Golden Week celebration, and we saw a, a large increase in, in victim traffic over this time period. So it helps us to understand the, the scale, uh, the, the effectiveness of some of the campaigns, you know, targeting people, as Manabu mentioned, when they're more likely to be uh, doing online shopping or um, effectively, not, you know, they're, they're not working, so so they're, they're doing other things with the internet at that time. And we saw the, the threat actors really targeting that period. Um, and I guess having established a, a, a collaboration effort based around victim analysis, it's allowed us to kind of develop over time to, to look at other areas. Um, so obviously our, our end goal in this is to help to identify and to, to disrupt the actors involved, um, to, to identify their infrastructure um, at a higher level. Um, but, but it started off with that initial collaboration around, around victims. Um, and it's also opened up, um, you know, Manabu gave an example of a, of a bad situation with, with a researcher, but it's also opened up opportunities for us to work with, with different researchers on this topic who've either reached out to us or we've reached out to them because we've seen that there's a, a shared interest in Mock How. Um, and I think that's, again, a really a valuable thing um, is, is just sharing what you found and not being able, not being scared to, to share what you found is, is really important. Um, and so now we, we're just going to summarise um, what, what we've spoken about today uh, on the sharing is caring. Um, Manabu, you go ahead. Okay. In conclusion, uh, let me explain what I learned from failures. The first one is sharing information without any context and any commitment does not make sense. Sharing is caring about the way of sharing matters. And the uh, next point is creating a shared goal with an um, opponent is a key to success. Yep, please go ahead. And also, don't trust someone who you don't know where. Even he or she has a good reputation online because maybe he or she may be a pro Trolls are everywhere. And uh, also, don't be a troll. Be nice. Give and take matter. Yep, that's all. And, and, and then I've just got some, some final thoughts on, on what we've spoken about today and, and for the future. Um, in summary, um, so the, the way we work and collaborate has changed as, as we've spoken about and as we're all aware. Um, and so we, I guess we've got to evolve and adapt to that. Um, and so we're encouraging people to, to, you know, to not be afraid to reach out to others, you know, look at the people around you at the conference, um, maybe take the opportunity today to speak to some people that you've never spoken to before, find out what, what areas they're, they're working in, what, what's of interest to them, and, and, and maybe you might find something that you can, you can work on together. And then also don't be afraid to reach out to others, um, you know, in, in the social media space or, or, or through other um, avenues um, but just exercise the caution uh, that, that Manabu mentions about trolls and, and people um, you know not collaborating on the on an equal standing and and also I guess the other side of this is to be reflect uh, receptive to collaborate collaboration opportunities that come from others um, so in the same way that you would like somebody to respond to you um, you know if, if somebody reaches out to ask about your research um, as, as long as it's okay to share it then I, I would encourage to do that and and to, to try to work with other people because I think that sometimes we're not aware of um, different thought processes or, or ways of understanding a threat that can be aided by, by speaking to others and by sharing um, sharing what we know. There's, there's lots of you know groups and, and forums and mailing lists that people are, are likely to be part of, but I think it's it's always useful and valuable to, to be expanding on those. Um, and, and utilize organizations um, like the, the, the CERT in Taiwan um, or CERTs around the world. Um, you know that they're going to be reputable, you know that they're going to be interested in, in, in useful information, um, and, and there's ways that you can set up data sharing, uh, information sharing in a way that's going to protect your interests, protect, you know, if you're working for a, an organization, um, 
you know, maybe setting up a non-disclosure agreement or something so that you can share the information, but it doesn't necessarily get used in in an open platform, an open forum. Um, again, as 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 Manabu experienced, where somebody else effectively stole his work. Um, so that that kind of finishes up what we wanted to talk to you all about today. Um, I hope it's it's been useful and, and maybe generated some some ideas um, and I, I hope that you you go away from this and maybe collaborate with somebody with in a, an area or region that you never thought about before um, and, and I think you know working together like that we can all kind of make a, a larger impact in the world. Um, so now we'd like to open up to any questions. Um, I guess we, this will be uh, online based, I'm, I'm not entirely sure, um, but if you also want to reach out to us, we're, we're on Twitter um, at Ninoseki and at Team Cymru underscore S2. Um, if there's questions that come up after after the event or after the talk, um, we'd be happy to hear from you. Um, and, and thank you again for the opportunity and, and the honour of speaking today. Um, and hopefully an event in the future we'll be able to meet in person.